Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. A warm welcome to you if you're new and also if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you. And please uh, like, subscribe and share if you find the content I provide every week useful. It's just a free way to uh, really support the channel and get this quality content out uh, on the YouTube uh, We'll get it up on the YouTube algorithm anyway. So uh, let's get into the um, really the news coming up this week before we get into any of the fundamental uh, and technical analysis. So week ahead, let's zoom in on trading economics. The US is releasing the second quarter estimate of the uh, first quarter GDP data. That's not going to really be so important unless it's a massive miss. Um, and it's the second estimate, so the first estimate is really the most important. Uh, second estimate should be somewhere close to the first estimate, so um, the news would have been really just priced in alongside durable goods orders, personal income and outlays, and PCE price index, which is, um, I think, the Federal Reserve's preferred way of measuring inflation. While President Biden's um, 2022 budget is also highly anticipated elsewhere, uh, central banks in South Korea, Indonesia, and New Zealand, if you trade in New Zealand dollar, you'd want to uh, uh, take note of this, will be deciding on monetary policy, while GDP updates to follow, including those from Germany, France, Mexico, and Singapore. Investors also eye the publication of the Eurozone Business Survey, China, industrial profits, and Japan unemployment rate. So Japan unemployment rate will probably be uh, something to watch as well, as it has a direct, um, I guess, uh, correlation to... Uh, GDP and whether the economy is growing. A growing economy has um, low unemployment and um, if, if the economy isn't growing, then you have high unemployment, right? So a few things to, uh, to really kind of keep our eye on uh, this week. Anyways, let's get into the uh, technicals and fundamentals as well and starting off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index or the DXY and um, DXY is just a measure of uh, dollar strength against major currencies like the yen, the euro and the pound and uh, we use this as confluence or so it's, it's important to keep your eye on the, on the uh, dollar index just as confluence to see what's happening with overall dollar strength or weakness and just um, if you start to see uh, the dollar start to uh, rise in value I guess then you're looking at buy trades on some other dollar crosses and if it starts to sell off then um, do the opposite right you start to um, sell the dollar now uh, what helps us understand the direction overall direction of the dollar is through fundamentals so um, looking at the Fed and federal uh, officials signal open to taper talk at our upcoming meetings so many officials saw inflation expectations as well anchored and the Fed releases minutes um, on the 27th 28th April closed door policy meeting so this was uh, the Federal Reserve meeting that we're talking about they were open to uh well, they were open to a debate at, our com at, at upcoming meetings on scaling back their massive bond purchases uh, a record of their april gathering showed potentially putting taper talk on the table as early as next month and why is that important is because um uh, basically the federal reserve are buying bonds and by um by, by basically reducing those bond purchases, it should have a, an effect of potentially strengthening the currency because then the, the Federal Reserve doesn't necessarily have to print so much money to buy bonds, right? So a lot of central banks were supporting the bond market and the economy by printing a lot of money. And by tapering, by reducing the amount that they buy is supposed to have a, a positive and a strengthening effect, an appreciative effect on the currency. So a number of participants suggested that if the economy continued to make rapid progress towards the committee's goals, and that is important. Uh, so we look at GDP, it might be appropriate at some point in upcoming meetings to begin discussing a plan for adjusting the pace of asset purchases according to minutes from the FOMC published on Wednesday. So um, again, the thing to watch out for is uh, GDP. If GDP is really good, um, it starts to come out positive in the data, then um, you can start to buy the rumor that the Federal Reserve is potentially going to taper, which should actually start to strengthen the dollar index, right? So if you even start to talk about it, that is should be positive. So um, that is where by the rumor sold the fact comes in, and that's how you really 
stay ahead really of the curve. It's not about um, trying to look for uh, technical analysis to, to try and determine where the price is going. Um, technical analysis is literally like a quite a, a, a poor representation of trying to predict future pr price movement. Price movement in the medium to long term is um, is determined by really fundamental analysis, monetary policy, economic policy, etc. So um, we might actually find ourselves at the bottom, at the bottom right now. Not to say that this is the bottom right here, but in the future we could see prices drift down a little bit. We know that this has been an app. This was an absolute bargain at the beginning of 2021 for the dollar, and this may be another um, uh, bargain price. You know, halfway through the year, and again we need some sort of catalyst. Uh, for the market to shift their perspective on a weak dollar and if uh, we do get some uh, some taper talk at the next meeting then this could be a really nice area to look for uh, buy trades on the dollar and you wouldn't necessarily be buying the, uh, the DXY you would look to buy for example the dollar yen, dollar swiss, dollar cad etc. So looking uh, towards the dollar yen and dollar yen um, this week over the past uh, you know week or two we've really kind of been in this range between uh, this high and this low and again a bit more specific really I would say price can take between this high and this low over the past couple of weeks so really a quite, quite a tight range um, of what's that 108 to 109 maybe about 140 pips or so and um, and so again if we do get some sort of a positive dollar um, news start to come out then that would be actually quite a decent buy also as well I do like this 108 area to 107.50 nice fresh area of demand potentially for a nicer tech and I, I like this technical setup anyway um, and uh, so yeah these are the two zones that if I was looking to um, get involved in this currency pair putting my bias would be more towards buying the US dollar over the Japanese yen um, in a risk on environment of course risk on meaning that uh, investors are looking for a yield um, and uh, Risk off is where there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and where you have um, uh, uh, investors looking to protect their assets. Yeah, so money tends to flow into the Japanese yen. But um, those would be for me my options. Uh, if you do want to get short, if there is some sort of risk off um, uh, sentiment that comes into the market, could be uh, could be really anything from coronavirus to worries about inflation. Then it really, you know, should be a probably short trades. But overall, I think the the, the path of least resistance is to the uh, is to the upside. Um, so that's where I will be looking for some long trades. Not to say that I'm really buying or, or buying this pair because there are better tr uh, pairs to trade out there. But if there is a shift in sentiment on the uh, dollar and really good news starts to come out, then I might start to buy the dollar again. Looking uh, at the dollar Swiss, the dollar Swiss has come down. I do think this is a brilliant area uh, technically to look for some buy trades. And again, similar to uh, other dollar uh, pairs, if the, if the Federal Reserve start to really kind of signal taper talk, because the Swiss franc is definitely, and the Swiss National Bank are definitely not looking at um, uh, tapering anytime soon. In fact, there was a recent report that came out that the uh, Swiss National Bank is saying, saying that the, uh, the Swiss uh, franc is highly uh, um, highly ex um, overvalued as far as ex it's expensive. So they, in fact, want a cheaper currency um, at the moment. And so that would really be beneficial for the Swiss franc if prices do rise. But um, I do think that this potentially could be a really nice buy. Again, just looking at any kind of dollar um, uh, catalysts uh, for a buy trade at the moment but I think technically I really do like this area this 80 0.895 area for a buy if you're looking for a sell trade and looking to continue to sell the dollar I think that area there uh, supply so prices would have to come down inside this area uh, and then look for any kind of short trade so you go down into a lower time frame and then look for areas within this supply zone support and resistance etc um, to see whether there is uh, uh, tighter uh, entries uh, and stop stop places in your stop losses at tighter entries um, on a lower time frame uh, moving on to the um, dollar cad dollar cad come on 
There we go. Dollar CAD again. Dollar the CAD being actually quite strong um, when it comes to uh, uh, economic uh, data and policy. Again, we did get a bit of a pullback this week. Prices did sell off, but I think if the prices do pull back into this zone here, that could be a decent area. But preferred area would be right here. This uh, uh, one point two two seven nine to one. 0.235 area would be a decent area for a short trade as I think the Canadian dollar is probably one of the best uh, currencies uh, commodity currency um, and it should get stronger against the dollar doesn't mean that it's gonna get stronger every single day or even every single week there could be pullbacks but I think that area there and this area here is decent for a short trade if we can get up there again from a buying perspective we haven't really got any kind of strong demand so I really want to see price um, if I'm looking to buy the dollar CAD, which I'm probably not, but if you are looking to buy the uh, dollar CAD, you really want to see proof of value first. So prices really prove that there's demand here, then a pull back into that area, um, and then look for any kind of buy trades. Um, moving on to the uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the New Zealand dollar is projected by uh, several financial institutions to be a bit higher actually I think probably where it is now but in the medium to long term around the 73 areas and possibly 74s so any pullbacks I think would be probably buying opportunities although there are better trades out there if the dollar starts to strengthen and you've already got a decent um, New Zealand dollar um, a pair where the RBNZ is, is talking about tapering as well then I think any pullbacks into these demand zones a 70 cent round number is going to be a really nice buy I think right now we might not necessarily be at a bargain price if you consider where price is contained between that high and that low which is an expensive or a bargain area depending on which way you're buying yeah we're really at fair value so this was an absolute bargain back in um, April and prices went to the upside right so if prices do come back down to this area I do think that is a really nice buy or if prices pull you know make new highs then you want to see a pullback to demand before looking at getting um, long moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar um, all the forecasts pretty much came in correct right we were uh, looking at the um, the uh, the forecast in the private group and talking about you know buying the pound. Not too sure if many people did end up buying the pound, but um, again we, we forecasted really the direction of the pound, and we've been forecasting the direction of the pound uh, for months now against the dollar. And um, it's pretty much hit you know certain targets. So any kind of pullbacks into a demand zone looks like a decent buy. Now looking at some. Uh, fundamental uh, news we've got a uh, UK jobs market gains more than expected as lockdown eases so employment rises more than expected first since uh, first gains since the pandemic and policymakers now debating whether to again tighten monetary policy just like the uh, Federal Reserve were um, are looking at as well so all central banks are pretty much looking at tightening policy uh, based off of a strong um, uh, in strong employment data so the UK again the UK labour market strengthened more than expected which is always a good sign is a better sign uh, in April as the economy began to emerge from the coronavirus ex um, restrictions so again great news for the pound so any kind of pullbacks potentially are buying opportunities but if the, uh, the the dollar also starts to come out with good data then this trade is probably a harder trade you really want to trade um, uh, look for pairs that are diverging where you've got you know a, a really good economy versus a really bad economy or an, an economy that is struggling that is the kind of you know those are the trades that you want to really kind of take when you have two um, uh, economies that are either strong or weak for example then those trades are more difficult fundamentally to kind of determine the, the, the direction of travel of price so you want to look for really divergence trades or even convergence trades but for now it looks like the pound has got the edge over the over the uh, the US so any kind of pullbacks because we're at an expensive area it was expensive back here prices sold off and then this is potentially a an expensive area but the question you have to ask yourself is why buy the dollar because if you're shorting the pound here that means that you're buying the dollar is why why do you think the dollar is a bargain 
at this price. So um, for me, it's not really a trade, but um, let's see what happens there. My, my, I'd probably be, be more inclined to actually buy the uh, the pound over the dollar, but again, it just depends on um, on on the uh, on the data because the data has to support the narrative. But if you are looking to buy the dollar right now, this is a decent area technically. And look for you know some short trades um, currently. Um, one second, I think there was no, there wasn't anything else. Moving on to the euro dollar and euro dollar has come up to a decent area to look for any kind of short trades if you're looking to short the uh, euro. Um, but at the moment, I think um, eurozone is doing actually quite well. So we've got eurozone uh, PMI soars confirming that strong rebound is a strong rebound is underway. So after two quarters of contracting GDP, the second quarter of 2021 will likely show firm growth on the back of reopening economies and stronger consumer demand. Pipeline inflation pressures are also on the rise to uh, with shortages emerging and uh, demand returning and also as well from a um, from a central bank perspective, ECB's Lagarde signals no major policy shift at next meeting. So um, they're looking for a, probably a wait and see approach. So it depends on obviously the data and what comes out. So actually, in fact, if if the Fed start to be a bit more hawkish on taper, uh, uh, um, on tapering, sorry, then we could actually see prices start to uh, to fall here where you've got one central bank the ecb that are uh, maybe a bit more um oh, sorry a bit more um neutral on taper temper um uh, uh bond tapering and you've got the dollar in fact that are maybe a bit hawkish on on tapering it could be a bit of a divergence there which could push prices down um in the uh, short term Sorry about that. So we got, um, yeah, pretty much looking at um, potential sentiment divergences with the uh, with the with Europe uh, central bank and the dollar. But again, that's probably a bit more uh, a bit harder of a trade. I'd probably say just wait for a bit of a pullback. Um, if anything, uh, probably looking at there is the, the, the supply zone and the nearest demand zone is going to be around here as you made higher highs there. So just looking for prices to kind of pull back into this area here before looking at any kind of uh, continual long trades. I think this pair is probably due a bit of a pullback. Um, overall forecasts are talking about one, two, four, one, two, five at the uh, by the uh, end of the year so this could be actually a decent uh, pullback to get you know long as the uh, eurozone does play uh, a bit of catch up when it comes to um the their economy um and uh, let's see what happens with that but i, I think it's a bit probably more of a harder trade at the moment uh, to kind of predict the uh, short term direction long term direction you know one two fives are probably where we're at so i want to uh, probably if i'm looking for any kind of buy trades i'm looking for a deeper pullback if, if we can get one for a continued uh, long trade uh, moving on to the euro yen and this euro yen is just you know keeps going higher and higher uh, it just hasn't provided any kind of opportunity to get long on this i've been trying to get long from around uh, this area here but just hasn't pulled back but we could see a bit of a pullback let's see what happens if we can get a pullback into this zone uh, that could be decent got some decent upside potential if not then looking at here reason why i'm long euro is because again we've got a bit more of a recovery the japanese yen um is a bit behind they've got a bit, bit of an outbreak in the coronavirus so for me um it's euro yen all the way and even though we haven't necessarily got in on this trade if you go back the past few weeks um and see really what i've been talking about you'll see that the the, the you know we've been right on our analysis literally this is what's been happening and uh we've been saying that we want to get long um, on this currency pair and if we had there was an opportunity technically to get involved then um you know this would have been a really nice trade there's there's trades that we're not going to get in on um it just it is what it is right but uh the, the the main thing is is actually doing the fundamental analysis and then seeing it play out and if you can do that then the technicals just help you to jump on board when um when you are right 
you know, and you get your uh, you hone your skills on on really kind of predicting, you know, the direction of uh, travel. Anyways, uh, from a supplier perspective, I don't think there's anything you'd have to again wait for price to, you know, kind of come down a bit, prove that there's supply there, then move back up into that, you know, supply zone, which would start from around there and then look for, you know, some, some short trades. But for me, it's demand zones all the way. Uh, moving on to the uh, Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar. Um, we've been in a bit of a tight range over the past week or two. Um, I do probably the bias would be more to more upside, but again, with the US dollar potentially strengthening um, in the short term or, or the Fed talking about tapering, um, this is going to be a pretty much a, a harder trade to look for any kind of buy or, or sell trades as far as predicting short term direction. Longer term, I think there is um, the uh, institutions are predicting, you know, an 80 cent Aussie dollar. But so any any pullbacks, I think, to any kind of these zones here would be actually a decent area to look for uh, long trades. Or if prices pull, you know, um, go to the upside, then wait for pullbacks into demand before looking at getting uh, long on the uh, Australian dollar, US dollar. If you are looking at short trades, I do think this supply zone is really nice for a potential short trade. A nice hard in, hard out price movement. And uh, obviously where we've got this area as well, I think is really nice for a potential uh, short trade technically. Uh, Aussie yen has pulled back. So um, this is one of the pairs that I am really interested in getting any kind of entry to potential upside as long as risk stays on that's the main thing and uh, if it doesn't then that's fine i'm going to tidy this up a little bit we've got some demand zones stacked upon each other uh, but i think here is going to be where i'm looking for um and here probably yeah that's where we've got demand zones probably right there um so right now, looking for potential buy opportunities if we can get some with the Australian dollar uh, strengthening potentially. If it if that zone doesn't work out, then it's just looking for a better price down here. Unless again, uh, risk starts to turn off, and if it, it does start to drift to an, an off um, sentiment, then the Japanese yen should strengthen. But I think overall, with the coronavirus, um, you know, being under control, vaccine rollouts, Australia um, containing the vaccine, um, sorry, the virus, then uh, we should have more potential upside in the near term and finally looking at uh, gold and gold um, I think has been really making higher highs based off of inflation fears um, and the weak dollar as well so but this could potentially start to change a little bit from an overall perspective you know this being the absolute high being quite an expensive area for the dollar in August 2020 and it's been an absolute bargain earlier this year around March April we're really at fair value right fair value so for for gold against the dollar and again a weak dollar has really kind of helped um, uh, gold uh, you know uh, rise in value but um, I think with potentially the the, the dollar um, potentially now strengthening uh, in maybe again we need some catalysts but if it does uh, start to strengthen and the Fed do start to talk about tapering then gold heads uh, well gold may start to um, uh, come down but gold was uh, this week headed for third weekly advance with inflation in focus so gold pairs gains on Friday as dollar rises on factories output but UBS uh, still expects gold to reach the $1,600 uh, an ounce by the end of the year. So there is uh, the expectation of uh, lower um, gold due to potential um, uh, uh, inflation not necessarily coming true as far as high, really high inflation or inflation getting out of control and maybe a strengthening dollar so higher US inflation and lower government bond yields have lifted gold back to uh, $1,870 an ounce um, uh, but uh, let's see what, what potentially happens with gold and uh, and their, uh, their forecast so 
at the moment if you are looking for potential long gold trades then you're looking at um, you know pull back into a demand zone before looking at getting long at the moment um, that I don't think that levels really broken too much it hasn't really broken for me yes there are closes above it but it's not a convincing close so you could potentially still look for you know short trades um, in and around right now if you are if you do think that there is due a pullback gold has been you know on, on on a run for one two three four five six seven positive closes um so uh, uh we're probably due for some sort of uh, a bearish close and maybe a bit of a pullback at some point so that could be a decent uh sell right now if not then probably around here but you'd want to sit, start to look for uh, look towards the dollar index as confluence so the dollar any kind of dollar strength and then you're looking for a gold potential sell anyways guys uh, that's it for this week i uh, hope you have a great trading week and i'll speak to you until the next video take care and have a blessed week